Personality Disorder, or BDP for short. First, people with BDP usually feel everything is unstable. Your relationships, moods, thinking, behavior, even your identity. With borderline personality disorder, your self-image, goals, and even your likes and dislikes may frequently change in ways that feel confusing and unclear. As with most disorders, BDP is treatable, so you don't have to lose hope. Individuals who struggle with borderline personality disorder can be highly sensitive. They have a dialed-up nervous system. Because they are highly sensitive, they can quickly react to things and find it difficult to calm down when upset. This kind of unstable emotions often leads to relationship struggles for sufferers and they could also indulge in impulsive and reckless behaviors, which they would blame themselves for later. It is possible to overcome BPD. There are effective treatments for BPD. You can do certain things to help you get better until you get back in control of your thoughts, feelings, and actions. If you think you have BPD, here are some things you should know about it. 1. Borderline personality disorder often causes symptoms like extreme mood shifts and uncertainty in how a person views themselves and others. When a person has BPD, they usually find it difficult to stabilize their emotions. They feel unstable in their relationships, moods, thinking, behavior, and as well as their identity. According to Mayo Clinic, BPD affects how people think and feel about themselves and others enough to negatively impact their daily lives. According to Francesca Pereplechikova, PhD, Assistant Professor of Psychology in Psychiatry at Wellconnell Medical College, people with BPD don't just experience mood changes. These shifts can be so severe they make a person feel overcome by massive waves of emotion. And according to the National Institute of Mental Health, NIMH, the stimulus for these extreme emotional reactions can be minor, like a loved one leaving for a business trip. Many people without BPD have a fear of people that like or love leaving them, but people with BPD often experience this so intensely that they have a hard time trusting others and will cut people out of their lives. 2. BPD affects about 1% of people in the United States. The 2007 National Comorbidity Survey Replication published in Biological Psychiatry examined 5,692 people to know how many people were struggling with BPD. The study found that while the prevalence of any personality disorder was around 9%, only 1.4% of respondents met the diagnostic criteria for BPD in particular. 3. People with BPD often have other mental health conditions. According to the National Comorbidity Survey Replication, 84.5% of respondents with BPD had a co-occurring mental health disorder. And according to NIMH, the nature of these comorbidities varies from person to person and can make recognizing BPD difficult. For example, intense episodes of depression can be a symptom of BPD, but they can also result from a condition like major depressive disorder or bipolar disorder. Francesca Pereplechikova, PhD, says, In case of something like a substance use disorder, it may be a negative coping mechanism to deal with painful symptoms or BPD. In the same way, the feelings of abandonment and alienation from oneself and others, along with a lack of close and stable relationships, may lead to depression. 4. Borderline personality disorder and bipolar disorder are not the same thing. BPD and bipolar disorder are similar in some ways. For example, bipolar disorder also causes extreme shifts in mood and behaviors. According to an expert, these shifts are primarily between depressive and maniac episodes, having an abnormally elevated and energetic mood, or hypomanic episodes, which also involve usually high energy and activity levels but to a lesser extent. Also, the fear of abandonment and unstable personal relationships that are typically inherent to BPD isn't in the diagnostic criteria for bipolar disorder. 5. People with BPD are at an elevated risk for self-harm and suicide due to a mix of intense emotion and impulsivity. NIMH claims that along with self-harm, suicidal ideation and behavior are significantly more prevalent among people with BPD. The American Psychiatric Association estimates that 8-10% to of people with BPD will die by suicide. 
It is crucial to know that the rate of suicide attempts in this community is so elevated. Some sources say as high as 60 to 70 percent. The number of completed suicide is thankfully lower than it could be. Francesca Preprechikova, PhD, added that when people have BPD, they may self-harm because it feels like instantaneous relief for heightened emotions. Katrin Dyson Gordon, PhD, a clinical psychologist and assistant professor who studies BPD at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, says similarly, someone may attempt suicide as an impulsive means of coping with the deep emotional sufferings BPD can cause. 6. There is no single cause of BPD, but experts believe that several key risk factors are involved. According to the NIMH, research suggests that a combination of hereditary, neurological and environmental factors increase a person's likelihood to having BPD. As NIMH stated, if a family member has BPD, you are more likely to have it, but no known gene is linked to the condition. It also appears as though the brains of people with BPD have structural and functional changes in areas linked to things like emotional regulation. But it's not clear if those changes are a cause or result of the condition. When you consider factors of the environment, many people with BPD report instances of childhood trauma including abuse, abandonment and unstable relationships with their parents. 7. Some experts advocate for diagnosing BPD in adolescents while others prefer to wait until adulthood. According to Mayo Clinic, there has been general hesitation in diagnosing personality disorders in those under 18. Sometimes, what seems like BPD can simply be part of a child or teenager's emotional maturation. Reports say clinicians are discovering that BPD can be detected in children and adolescents. Possible signs are similar to those in adults and include impulsive risks taken, frequent angry outbursts, continuous interpersonal issues, markedly low self-esteem, and repetitive self-injury or suicide attempts. The earlier clinicians intervene, the more likely they are to help. 8. The first line of treatment for BPD is therapy. Francesca Preplechikova, PhD says the goal is to help our clients build up emotional regulation muscles so that they will be able to withstand the impact of those emotional waves. We cannot take away their emotional reactivity, but we can give them skills to better respond to the emotional reactions. NIMH added, one method for this is dialectical behavioral therapy DBT, which combines acceptance and mindfulness of one's emotional state with coping skills for those emotions. Cognitive behavioral therapy CBT, which can help people with BPD identify and manage their emotions and behaviors is another common option. 9. It can be hard for a person with BPD to trust their therapist, but that bond is often foundational to recovery. Preplechikova says, this is why therapists treating BPD typically emphasize acceptance and validation. There is an important distinction between accepting a statement or behavior. NIMH says, in addition to this, one-on-one -on -one model group sessions led by a therapist can also help people with BPD learn how to best interact and express themselves to other people. 10. There are not any medications specifically recommended to treat BPD. There is no benefit yet to using medications to treat BPD primarily. But as Paraplechikova admits, psychiatrists may prescribe medications to address certain symptoms that some people experience. They may include mood stabilizers for emotional instability. Also, someone who is struggling with BPD who also has clinically diagnosed current disorder such as anxiety, depression and PTSD may take medications to treat those conditions. 11. BPD is often stigmatized even among healthcare providers. A 2013 review of available literatures published in Innovations in Clinical Neuroscience discovered that certain mental health providers maintain false and harmful perspectives on BPD. Ordinary people can believe this myth too. Daxon Gordon says, one of the most pervasive misperceptions among professionals and non-professionals alike is that people with BPD are intentionally 
maliciously trying to manipulate those around them and their displays of extreme emotions or self-harm. This is false. These symptoms come from mental illness. They do not come from someone who just wants to manipulate others. 12. People with BPD can be empathetic and lovely individuals. Periplechikova says, Extreme emotional sensitivity presents with serious challenges, but there are also benefits. People with BPD are often able to understand the feelings of other people to a greater degree. Many people with BPD are usually creative because they have a deeper and broader experience of human emotions from which to draw. According to Perplechikova, BPDs are really fun, creative, compassionate, beautiful people. 13. With solid therapy and hard work, the long-term outlook of people with BPD can be bright. Remission in BPD is defined as meeting two or fewer BPD criteria. Research shows that remission rates are incredibly high. A study of 175 BPD patients published in Archives of General Psychiatry in 2011 found that 85% remitted within 10 years. The researchers said that most of the change occurred in the early years. A researcher also said BPD does not have to define anyone, it's treatable and there is help out there. If this video has helped you better understand borderline personality disorder, subscribe to our channel for more helpful videos. We love you.